Good morning guys, we are in Prague, Czech Republic, and I just wanted to give you a quick glimpse of Prague from outside of our Airbnb balcony. We're staying outside of the city in order to save money, and this is the view. Can't really see much, right? Let's get a little bit closer. All right, that's better. We took a super early morning train from Salzburg to Prague two days ago, yeah. two days ago, and we're so excited to finally be here. This was one of the only times we were gonna be able to visit this country this year. It is a huge city full of architecture, history, and beer, and those are the things that we're dialed in on for today, but first is coffee. We're here at One Sip Coffee, partially because we have a lot to see today and we didn't have time to sit down at a coffee shop. This is also really highly rated on all the blogs as something that's a little unique. It doesn't have a ton of seating, so you have to kind of take it away or you have to grab a spot. Just get thick. Just near One Sip Coffee is the Jewish Quarter of Prague. It's located between the Old Town Square and the Vltava River. This area served as the home of thousands of Jewish people who'd been displaced from other areas in Prague beginning in the 13th century. Over the centuries, numbers in the area would continue to climb as expelled Jews from the surrounding countries made their way here. At the height of World War II under Nazi occupation, the Nazis actually made the decision to preserve the area but only as a museum of an extinct race. This decision, while heinous obviously, this decision led to the survival of the area's most sacred and significant historical buildings, which included six synagogues and the old Jewish cemetery. If you visit Prague and decide that you want to visit the Jewish quarter and the Jewish cemetery and these synagogues, then keep in mind you're going to need a ticket. Tickets for the Jewish quarter are 500 Czech crowns each, which is about 20 bucks USD, or you could purchase a Prague card for 50 euros each for one day access to almost everything here in the center of Prague. As we mentioned earlier, today's about architecture and beer and history. So we're gonna feed you history and we're gonna feed you the architecture. And that's one of the best things about this place is that a lot of the best things that you can see, you can see from the outside. You don't totally need to go on the inside of them, but if you want to go on the inside, you're probably gonna have to pay for a lot of it. Well, we were gonna walk through more of the Jewish quarter and try and get a sneak peek of more of the cemetery, but unfortunately, a lot of it on the outside is closed off because they are filming some movie here. I think I figured out what was being filmed back there, and it's called A Small Light. It's a World War II drama miniseries type thing, but got to see a scene being filmed, so we're gonna have to watch that back. I knew Prague had a really good reputation for having really unique architecture and it is not disappointing. I'm honestly very, very impressed and surprised. No building is like the other and the detail on each building that makes them super unique is just incredible. I don't know how they do stuff like that. <laughs> like I'm sure there are buildings that are like similar to others and th there are some generic buildings. I'm sure there are, but I've not seen them yet. It's... Nope. Now we're heading to the city center of Prague to an area called Old Town Square. Throughout Europe, every city has one of these areas that date back centuries and has always served as that particular city's core. Prague's happens to be Old Town Square. This square dates back to the 12th century and it's had some pretty wild moments that have taken place here. From protests to executions, you name it, it's probably had it. Now, I don't think it's really necessary to dive into a lot of that, but I do want to dive a bit into a couple of the buildings around it. First up is the Church of Our Lady Before Tyne, or Tin. I'm not really sure how you pronounce that last word. Either way, it's a 14th century church that was built in the Gothic style, and it obviously dominates the skyline here in Prague and in Old Town Square. Unfortunately, it's closed on Sundays and Mondays, but we are able to poke our heads in here and get a quick glimpse of the interior, but without question, the selling point is the exterior. Another major building in this square and one of the city's most visited monuments is Old Town Hall. This was established in 1338 as the seat of the Old Town administration, back when Prague was in quarters called Old Town, New Town, Castle Quarter, and Little Quarter. The oldest part of the Old Town Hall consists of the Gothic Tower with the Bay Chapel and the astronomical clock, known as the Orloge, or Ola, however you say that, <laughs> where every hour between 9 a.m. and 11 p.m., the 12 apostles appear. You can visit Old Town Hall by purchasing tickets for 250 Czech Krona each, which is about $10 USD. And that gets you access to the Chapel of the Virgin Mary, the historical halls, and the Town Hall Tower if you're doing a self-guided tour like us. And if you purchase a guided tour, you get access to the underground, 
in addition to everything I just mentioned. Also, if you come the last little bit of the town hall tower climb, it's a very narrow circular, very narrow circular staircase. If you're ever in Prague and you're wondering how to A, get to the Charles Bridge, and B, get to the other side of Prague, on the other side of the river, just uh, follow the crowds. We're all going the same place, I guess. As we mentioned earlier, the city of Prague has the Vltava River cutting right through the center, which once divided the city and the quarters. So on the west side of the river, you have the two areas of the castle quarter and the little quarter, while on the east side of the river, you have the old town and the new town. This bridge was the only thing connecting the Prague castle to the old town for the better half of 500 years, and was an important trade route between Eastern and Western Europe. On the bridge you'll find lots of vendors, there's street performers, and there's a lot of entertainment because the bridge is kind of long. Yeah. I didn't think it would be this long. I thought it'd be too. We stopped by a market to grab something quick for lunch because we have a cool little viewpoint that we want to eat lunch at. And we have kind of a large dinner planned. Or beer hopping. <laughs> Maybe not large, just a heavy dinner. Yeah. Lots of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Absolutely not. <laughs> she likes the owls. Didn't mind the owls in Edinburgh, but here in Prague, she didn't want to hold the, uh, the big snake. He was yellow. That's your favorite color. I don't care. <laughs> okay, we found a spot right next to Prague Castle and St. Vitus Cathedral. It's like both are like right here. But first, we're going to sit here and enjoy lunch with this beautiful view. Check this out. So as I imagined, there is food up here that you can purchase, and it smells amazing. Our lunch was good. That might have been a little bit better, I'll admit. But this view is great. Next up is probably the most famous building, structures, complex, whatever you want to call it, here in Prague. It's called the Prague Castle. You can probably see behind me the line to get into the Prague Castle and the grounds. It's very long, but supposedly once you get through, it's free. And if you want to go inside like anywhere, then it's, I think, 10 euros each. So yeah, I could have sworn that you had to pay to come inside the cathedral, which is why I don't have like a lot of facts on it, because I didn't plan on paying to come in, but we're in. It's beautiful. That's the one fact I have. So over here to the side, you can come into the cathedral, into the main part of the cathedral, and get views, but if you want to go any further, then there are turnstiles like right here. So you'll have to pay that 250 Czech Corona each, which is about 10 bucks. But that gets you access to more of the cathedral here, as well as the interior of the Prague Castle and other various sites around the grounds. So we've talked about the history, we've talked about the architecture, and we still have one more thing to talk about. If you remember at the top of the video, I said that we were going to focus today's vlog on three things. Here comes number three. Beer. Prague's known for great beer halls and great beer, and one of the most famous and largest ones here in the city center is called Ufleco. Either way, it's a very popular place here. Supposedly there's like an accordion player playing throughout the day. Um, obviously he's not playing right now, I might be on break. But there are eight different beer halls, and they're all designed differently. But we don't want to spend all of our time here. We're going to see this one because this is like the biggest and most famous one. But uh, Chris Hagen is actually Hannah's uncle's brother. Uh, he comes here often and he told us that the best thing that you can do in Prague is to go to the smaller beer halls around the city. He was like, if you see a hole in the wall type beer hall, poke your head in and grab a beer. So that's what we're going to do after this. But first we wanted to show you the biggest one in the city. <laughs> is it open? I guess we just try this place. This says the best beer. 
That's all we needed to see. Oh. Oh my gosh. Beers number two. Probably won't be the last ones because it's like early. It's only it's not even five o'clock. <laughs> Don't get the rest of the night. Alright, I think this has descended into a beer tour. But we're gonna go find a place to get something to eat because all we've had are those little bread things that we ate earlier. Did we even show those? I have no idea. But we're gonna, I'm gonna finish this beer and then we're gonna go to the next place. So now we don't normally do this in our vlogs where A, we're like drinking from place to place, but B, like we're ordering multiple beers throughout the evening. Normally we try to stick to a budget, but these beers are like 100 Czech crowns for two of them. So we're getting an authentic Prague experience by coming into these places and having these beers, and it's not very expensive at all. Oh. <laughs> Prague's also known for their pilsners, which is the light beer we've been getting. We haven't been rating them at all. I feel like we should have. I'm pretty sure they're the same everywhere. Really? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the same pilsner. It's this one right here. This has descended into total madness. I didn't plan on doing a beer tour along with our Prague tour. Um, but we are going to get some traditional Czech cuisine now, as promised. That's what we're hunting for. We found the place that we wanted to get food at, but there's a wait. So that means it's good, and we should definitely wait. There's only like four people ahead of us, like four parties ahead of us. It shouldn't be too long, but we're just kind of standing here until someone tells us to move. Oopsies! I spilled a little bit. We got a table! Not in the shop. Fantastic, thank you. We just got a Shopska salad. We got a variety of local sausages, and I don't remember what you got. I got pork medallions. What does it come with? Buttered potatoes. So I'm trying to figure out a way to describe Prague that isn't really cliche, but it feels like somewhat of a fairy tale pop-up. The architecture is clearly what sets this city apart from everywhere else that we've been in Europe, and while the architecture was pretty distinctly gothic, it feels completely opposite of the traditional gothic style that we've seen anywhere else. But I've just loved exploring the city. I can't wait to explore more of this beer. So we're going to wrap this vlog up here. We've had an excellent few days in Prague, but I'm really excited for our next stop in which we are flying to for the first time in two months. And that next stop is Rome. Guys, I just had an idea. What if we started a new YouTube channel called Probably Drunk and doing like a beer tour in every city that we go to. Would you watch this? Get in the comments below and tell us.